Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at National College of Ireland and in this short video, another video in our series of videos dealing with relations and functions, we're going to concentrate on uh, what the digraph of an anti-symmetric relation looks like. Okay? In the video just before this we looked at an asymmetric relation, in this one we're going to look at an anti-symmetric relation. Okay? Uh, and just let's keep in mind what a relation is, a relation okay, or on a set A is a subset okay, of A cross A. So it's a subset of the cross product of A with A. Okay? And as an example, if if A is the set 1, 2, 4, 7, as an example, uh, it's cross product. We'll use this particular device to construct it. Let's list the elements of A down the column, 1, 2, 4, 7. And also across the row, 1, 2, 4, 7. Let's construct the ordered pairs, 1 with 1, 1 with 2, 1 with 4, uh, 1 with 7, uh, 2 with 1, 2 with 2, uh, 2 with 4, 2 with 7, uh, 4 with 1, 4 with 2, uh, 4 with 4, 4 with 7, uh, 7 with 1, 7 with 2, 7 with 4, 7 with 7. And we take all of those guys and we throw them into a set, okay, we throw them into a set, we end up with A cross A. And a relation is simply a subset of this particular set of ordered pairs. That's what we define a relation to be. But in this particular video, we're interested in anti-symmetric relations. So let's maybe give the definition of an anti-symmetric relation. So the definition, let's say we have something like this. Let's just maybe highlight this here. That it is a definition here. Okay. Uh, a let's say so. This is a definition for anti-symmetric. So let's say given given a relation a relation or on a set A, uh, we say that or is anti-symmetric, now as opposed to asymmetric, anti-symmetric if and only if, okay, uh, for each and every A, B that's in the relation, okay, uh, where A is not equal to B, we must have, we must have that B, A is not in the relation, okay? Another way to say this is that uh, for each and every ordered pair A, B in the relation, if B, A is in the relation, well then A must be equal to B, okay? Uh, that's an important, it's an alternative definition, but in this case here, I'm just giving you giving you another way to actually test for uh, anti-symmetry, okay? And it's a nice way because what we need to do is we look at the ordered pairs, we flip them, and we need to make sure that the flip of the ordered pair is not in the relation, okay? So what does it mean to be anti-symmetric? Well, uh, anti-symmetric, what does an anti-symmetric graph look like? So let's construct a graph, let's say we have 1, uh, we have 2, we have 4, and we have 7, okay? Um, so what it's saying is that when A is not equal to B, they're the ones we're interested in, so we actually don't care about the self-loops, okay? It's okay, it's okay to have a self-loop in the graph, okay? It's okay to have a self-loop somewhere in the graph, okay? Because the anti-symmetric condition uh, doesn't require us to consider the self-loops. It's saying you need to consider every ordered pair in the relation, okay, uh, where the ordered pair where A is not equal to B, they're the things that we consider, okay? So actually, self-loops are okay. So self-loops self are okay in an anti-symmetric relation, okay? But now what we have, now we have like the other condition, an asymmetric condition, uh, we must always have, well, we can't have a situation, in this in this case here you can see 4 is taken to 2, so 4 is taken to 2, I can't, 4 is different to 2, okay, so I can consider this particular edge here, for it to be anti-symmetric, I can't have 2 going back to 4. So the important thing here now is this, is that in an anti-symmetric relation from A to B, Okay. You can't have the loop going going back. That's not allowed, the loop going back. But self-loops are okay. So that's what an anti-symmetric relation looks like. Uh, so it looks like, from a digraph perspective, anything where you have an edge leaving a node or leaving an element to another element, but you don't have an edge coming back. So this relation here, or which is contains 1, 1, 7, 7, and it contains 4, 2. Uh, this relation here so far... It is anti-symmetric. And I can throw in some more loops. Just let's be careful. I can go in, I can go from 2 to 1. 
Oh, that's okay because I'm not going back from one to two. So currently now, this is still anti-symmetric. Uh, I could go from seven, seven to four. I could throw that in there. Seven to four is okay because I'm not going back from four to seven. So this this relation here, represented as this digraph, okay, okay, the digraph, is still anti-symmetric. Okay, guys, uh, let's just recall uh, in this situation uh, an anti-symmetric relation. Self loops are okay, but we can't have a situation where when you leave a node or an element to another element and these two values are different to each other, you can't have a situation where you can go back from that value uh, to to the original, to, 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 the, to the starting point. Okay, That's what an anti-symmetric relation will always look like. Okay, guys, once again, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And I hope that this video was in some way uh, intuitive. And more importantly, I hope that was helpful for you. And thanks for watching. Okay, bye-bye.